Kalishaw joins me now on the Rich Eisen Show. Tim, I'm, I'm, I promise not to mute you on this program, okay? That would be a welcome, welcome change. Thank you, sir. You are welcome, sir. The Dallas Morning News. How, how, how's the fan base there treating this? Is everybody looking for the trap door, wondering when the Cowboys of the last four years, if not the last 10, 12, 20 years, are going to show up? Oh, we lost Tim Kalashaw there. When you get him back, Chris Law, yep. you let me know. Yeah, I'll get him back. Uh, in the meantime, um, I guess I did mute him. <laughs> or, his, or his cell reception did mute him. So, I mean, the, the Cowboys uh, coming into this game are taking on a team in the Washington Redskins that have lost nine in a row on the road. That is the longest streak in the National Football League. Alfred Morris, they're waiting, we're waiting to see him come alive. He had 18 rushes for 54 yards last year, as we all know. Uh, he, he had a much better season. The Cowboys, the last time they led the NFL for the most wins at the end of a week, alone in first after week 10 in 1994, they were 8-1. and one. Is Tim back on the phone? Tim, you there? Tim's back on, yep. Yes, I'm, I'm here. Is that, is that okay? It's much better, sir. How is everybody Thank there fair, uh, uh, feeling about the Cowboys? Are they uh, over the moon or are they looking for a trap door there in the Metroplex? I, I, I think there's still some trepidation. People, you know, one playoff win this century. People have been through 13-3 and three and that didn't go anywhere. So they want to see more, but I, I think there's a real belief that they at least have the right system. They're running the ball. That takes the pressure off Romo. That takes the pressure off the defense. It seems like something that could work. They just need to see it for more games. So where, where do you think the Cowboys are going to wind up this year? Where well, do you think? I mean, I, I keep trying to figure out who I think is better. And a week ago, I thought maybe Green Bay was better. And then I saw... Aaron Rodgers limping around uh, last night near the goal line and, and what happened with that team. So it, it, I, I still think Seattle and San Francisco in January, I would put my money on them, but they obviously both have plenty of issues to overcome and, and quite possibly would have to win in Dallas uh, given their records. And the question is, though, let's not sleep on the team that's coming into the Jones Mahal in six days. I mean, no, uh, they they are uh, currently six and one as well, Arizona and and in search of a win like the one that Dallas came up with a couple of weeks ago in Seattle, where everybody can believe in them. Everybody, I think, is still waiting to see if Arizona can go on the road and and beat an opponent they're not supposed to beat. And now Dallas, interestingly enough, can serve the role for them that Seattle right. served for Dallas a couple of weeks ago. Isn't that, isn't that odd for Dallas to be in that role? Yeah. Um, yes. I mean, but, yeah, Carson Palmer, Andre Ellington at running back. I mean, there, there's a lot of disbelief there. They're really good defensively, even with the guys who've been hurt. They seem to always have four wide receivers, all numbered like 1, 11, 12, 14, 15, uh, who are open. So you never know who it's going to be from week to week. But, yeah, like that, that's going to be a, that's going to be a great uh, – noon game here next week so what do we owe the balance on the offense is it Linehan is it is it Jason Garrett above it all who has been preaching to Tony Romo about um, this style of handing the ball off and giving some sort of system where he's not checking out of plays and taking some of the burden off of him to what do we owe the balance on the O indeed I, I, I think some of it excuse me I think some of it does have to go to Garrett, uh, people have said when he called the plays, they never ran the ball like this. But they, they did not have, they hadn't called the plays in two years, and their offensive line two years ago was nothing like this one. So I think it all just kind of came together. The, the three, three first round picks in the line, a quarterback who in the summer played very little in Oxnard and and played very little in the preseason. So you were going to be cautious. And a defense that looked like it was just going to be terrible again. I mean, all those things would say, let's shorten the game and run the ball. And so I have to think Garrett and Linehan, you know, figured this out together uh, with help from the fact that this defense still looked terrible in uh, in Oxnard. And, and it's all it's all worked out amazingly. What's it going to be like for the Cowboys fans to see Colt McCoy in a Redskins uniform, Mr. Texas Longhorn himself tonight? Yes, representing my alma mater well, one would think, uh, just as he did in Cleveland. Um, no, I mean, I, 
look, he, he can get the ball to two wide receivers somewhere on the field who have hurt this team a lot through the year. Now, Deshaun Jackson didn't a year ago, but he's had big games against Dallas. Pierre Garçon's the last receiver to have 100 yards receiving, wide receiver, against Dallas uh, in, in the 15th game last year. So, but, but the thing is, Colt McCoy has always gotten hit a lot, and he was a fumbler when he played in Cleveland. So he has to stay away. They can't give Dallas points. If they don't do that, I think they can hang around the game the way the Giants did last week and make it make it uh, at least entertaining. But I don't know that we can expect a ton from, from young Colt. Well, what I'm just saying is that uh, – uh, we all know how rabid the fan base is for the Dallas Cowboys. Is there going to be any sort of tugged emotion seeing Colt McCoy? I mean, so many people in that state rooted for him, still root for him, love him, will yeah. never forget him. I, I, I think that goes away pretty quick. My, my you know, I, I don't think they cheer much for Griffin when he comes here from the Baylor fans, and surely there's more Texas fans, but right now Texas has so many issues that people aren't really inclined to show up in big numbers and say, how great Texas football is, University of Texas football. So there will be a few, but but it, there won't be any big outpouring of people wearing burnt orange tonight. How do Cuban and, and uh, Jerry Jones get along? Because, I mean, Cuban's taking shots at the NFL every chance he can, and we all know what you know Jerry Jones stands for. So how do those guys get yeah. along? He, they actually get along okay. He, he takes shots at the NFL. He doesn't take shots at Jerry. He, he always praises Jerry. And, he, in fact, he said, you know, um, you know, as far as the, you know, 40,000 Texans fans or 49ers fans, Cuban just said it's the law of unintended consequences. You build this massive, wonderful stadium, and, and sometimes those things happen. But uh, they personally, although they're very, very different, uh, they've never had any kind of <clears throat> big dispute over anything. Now, now Cuban is, is still jealous of uh, the NFL attention, but I, I think his – his idea that the NFL's got an oversaturation problem, that's hard to sell with a, in a league where they play 82 games and potentially 28 playoff games. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and that's the thing that I have an issue with. And that's one of the things that I love about the NFL playoffs, Tim, is that the playoffs are just like the regular season. It's one a week, sometimes you even have a short week. If, let's like, say, you play on a Sunday on wild card weekend and then you got a Saturday game on divisional weekend those things happen in the NBA or the NHL or even you're seeing in the in Major League Baseball right now um, once you're in the series in baseball you do get similar to the regular season where you play back to back games but in the NBA sometimes you get three four games uh, that, that take two weeks to play. Right, and and you never have that in the regular season. In the NFL, at you least get the wild, you get the from the NFL wild card games to the NFC and AFC championship games in less time than some of the first round series did. Yeah, I know. So yeah, mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, and I think you could make that argument if you know if the NFL picked another night to go to, or if they went to 18 games and were just dragging people off the field. But you know they haven't done that yet, so I think it's kind of a uh, fake argument. So seven and one. You think the Cowboys go to tonight? Do they get to eight and one? Do you think they they, they take care of Arizona in the, in the short week? It will be six days for them. I would I would take right now. No, I, I have to pick them to lose somewhere in this stretch, and I'm not going to pick them to lose to Jacksonville in London the week after that. So you know I, I could see you get through tonight, but then Arizona, you you play a team that can stop the run a little bit, and and can defend your receivers and. Uh, has, as you pointed out, something to really play for to try to get people's attention because they're still under the radar at six and one. So, I, yeah, I think next week's going to be very tough. Thanks, Tim. Appreciate it. Enjoy the Monday night game, and we'll see you uh, on ESPN as well as the Dallas Morning News pages. Hey, thanks, Rich. Appreciate it. The Rich Eisen Show weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.